Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakumar. I make lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. In our previous video, we have seen the underlying concepts in balancing of coupled locomotives. In this video, we shall solve a numerical problem on partial balancing of inside cylinder coupled locomotive. So, let's get started. Before we proceed with the numerical problem, let us do quick recap of the prerequisite concepts. This problem comes under balancing of two cylinder engines. In this four types of problems in partial balancing in locomotives, this numerical problem comes under type 3, which is nothing but balancing of coupled inside cylinder locomotive. This is an arrangement of coupled locomotives. The coupling rod is used to couple the driving and trailing wheels. We know that cranks of the two cylinders are placed 90 degree with each other. And also the cranks of the coupling rod are diametrically opposite to the cylinder cranks. We know that we need to consider six planes for balancing of coupled locomotives. To solve this problem, we are going to use the same notations that we have used so far. These are the various formulae that we are going to use while solving the problem. Now let us get on with a numerical problem. The problem statement goes like this. The following data refer to a four coupled wheel locomotive with two inside cylinders. So we should be considering two driving wheels and two trailing wheels. So these are two inside cylinders, cylinder one and two. Pitch of the cylinder refers to center distance between the two cylinders, which we denote by letter A. Reciprocating mass per cylinder, M R E. Revolving mass per cylinder, M R O. Distance between the driving wheels, L. Distance between coupling rods, L1. Diameter of the driving wheels, D. Revolving mass for each coupling rod crank is given as 130 kg. Engine crank radius. Coupling rod crank radius is given here. Distance of center of balance mass in planes of driving wheels from axle centers equal to 750 mm. Radius of rotation of the balancing mass, small letter b. Angle with engine cranks 90 degree. These two cranks are having 90 degree with each other. Angle between the coupling rod crank with adjacent engine crank is 180 degree. So these two will have 180 degree with each other. These two cranks will have 180 degree with each other. The balancing mass required for the reciprocating parts is equally divided between each pair of coupled wheels. Determine the magnitude and the position of the balance mass required to balance two-thirds of the reciprocating mass. C is 2 by 3 and the whole of the revolving mass. So we need to find the magnitude and position of the balancing mass that are to be added on the wheels. This is what we need to find. Also determine the hammer blow and maximum variation of tractive force when the locomotive speed is given as 80 km per hour. Right, as always, the given data and record data are listed using our usual notations. Now let us solve this problem. The first subdivision we need to find magnitude and position of balancing masses that are to be added on the driving and the trailing wheels. 
here we will be considering only four wheels these two won't be considered we know that in coupled locomotive six planes are to be considered for balancing two planes for coupling rods plane a and plane f and two planes for driving wheels plane b and plane e then two planes for two cylinder cranks namely plane c and plane d so in total we have six planes that are to be considered now this coupled locomotive problem is equivalent to six rotating masses revolving in different planes problem we can solve this problem by using this five step procedure we have to understand that in coupled locomotives balancing masses are distributed among the driving and trailing wheels and also the magnitude and the direction of the balancing masses placed in the driving wheels and the trailing wheels are not same or different so this problem should be converted into two sub problems in case one first let us find the magnitude and position of balance mass that are to be added in the driving wheels alone the second sub problem let us determine magnitude and position of balance masses to be added in trailing wheels let us consider case 1 now so in case 1 we are going to find magnitude and position of balance mass to be added in driving wheels alone let us consider only driving wheels and associated six planes a to f first let us find what are the masses in all six planes so mb me are the balancing masses placed in driving wheels 1 and 2 respectively whose magnitude and direction are unknown this is what we need to determine it is given that revolving mass of the coupling rod per cylinder as 130 kg so i could assume ma is equal to mf is equal to 130 kg it is given that mass of the reciprocating parts per cylinder to be balanced is 2 by 3 of the reciprocating mass so 210 kg is the mass of the reciprocating parts it is given in the problem that the reciprocating masses have to be divided equally between the driving wheels and the trailing wheels therefore 105 kg is taken for each of the driving and trailing wheels in the reciprocating engine we have two components one is rotating parts of the engine another one is reciprocating parts of the engine what we have determined here is reciprocating parts of the engine so mass at crank c and crank d is equal to whole of the revolving mass plus fraction of that reciprocating mass which is divided between driving and trailing wheels so this is given as 260 plus 105 equal to 365 kg first step we have to draw the position of the planes so we have six planes please refer to this diagram using a l l1 we can find the distance between each plane as shown here now we will draw angular position of planes we know that crank c and d are 90 degree with each other so i could take either c or d as a horizontal so i have taken d as a horizontal obviously c will be perpendicular we also know that with reference to c the neighboring crank of the coupling rod which is nothing but plane a will be having 180 degree same way the position of the crank of the coupling rod 2 will be in the opposite direction with respect to its nearby crank so this crank is d therefore plane f will be opposite direction 180 degree 
Now we are going to tablet the values. We know that we have six planes A, B, C, D, E, and F. Though we can consider either plane B or plane E as a reference plane, I have chosen plane B as a reference plane. Any distance measured towards right is assumed to be positive towards left as negative. B is our reference plane. Now for each plane we can complete the data. We have found the masses, radius, multiplying them we will get the centrifugal force. The distance between plane A and the reference plane is 0.2 meter. They are measured towards left so minus 0 0.2 so multiplying with centrifugal force we will get the couple value for plane b we do not know mass of the b unknown we know the radius 0.75 given take that centrifugal force since b itself the reference plane the distance will be zero so we have completed the row i can complete same way in plane E we have another unknown ME since we have one unknown in couple column first let me draw the couple polygon using the magnitudes of this couple data and directions given in the angular position of planes we can very well draw all couple vectors one by one We know that for complete balancing, this couple polygon must be closed. So, by measuring this closing side and equating with this unknown 1.2 Me, we can find one unknown value Me. There you are. We got the first answer known as mass of wheel E as 75 kg. You know how to obtain direction of ME. Just by drawing a parallel line parallel to this vector in the angular position of planes diagram, we will get the direction. So by measurement from angular position of planes, I can get the value of theta E. Now we can draw the force polygon by using the magnitudes of the centrifugal forces and knowing directions of phi planes, we can very well complete the force polygon. Unclosed force polygon we will get, but we know that for complete balancing, the force polygon must be closed. So we must be closing this side. So by measuring this closing side, and equating to this unknown 0.75 MB, we will be getting the another unknown MB. Yes, I have got the third answer MB as 75 kg. We have to draw parallel line parallel to this vector in the angular position plane diagram. We will get its direction. Interestingly, the direction of B and E are same. Therefore, by measurement from the angular position planes diagram, we get theta B also as 225 degree measured counterclockwise from plane D. So we have obtained balancing masses to be added in the driving wheels now. Now we need to repeat the same procedure to find magnitude and position of balancing masses to be added in trailing wheels. Let us find masses in six planes. B and E are driving wheels. B 
D dash and E dash are trailing wheels. So M B dash, M E dash is what we have to find. They are unknown. Masses in planes A and F. It is given in the problem that revolving mass of the coupling rod per cylinder is 130 kg. So we know that masses. For trailing wheels, we do not have crank and cylinder directly coupled. But it is given that mass of the reciprocating parts per cylinder to be balanced is 210 kg. And the 210 kg is divided equally between the driving wheels and the trailing wheels. Therefore, mass to be considered at plane C and D is equal to whole revolving mass plus portion of the reciprocating mass. But here we do not have any crank. We do not have portion of revolving parts of the cylinder 1 and 2. So that is 0. For the trailing wheels also, we will be having six planes. Only the mass values would be changing. So this is so critical to understand. Again, step one, draw the position of the planes. Here, I have called them, this is plane B dash, E dash. Angular position planes remain same. So we can complete the table. We have six planes. We know the mass. We know the radius. Centrifugal force can be found and the couple can be found. Since we have only one unknown in the couple column, I can draw the couple polygon first. As always, choose a suitable scale. Using the magnitude of couples and directions of four planes, we can draw the couple polygon. Once you draw, we will be getting this unclosed polygon. We know that polygon must be closed for complete balancing. Therefore, we must be closing this polygon. We know that the closing side must be equal to this unknown. So by measuring the closing side and equating with 1.2 me dash, we can find me dash value. So equating it, I got the value of me dash. We know that this is the direction of ME dash. We can draw a line parallel to this vector here in this angular position of planes diagram. Yes, we got this parallel line. Now, by measurement from the angular position diagram, we can find the theta E dash value. We got the magnitude and direction of E dash. Using the known magnitudes of the centrifugal force and known direction of five planes, we can draw the force polygon now. This is the force polygon which we would be getting. It is not a closed polygon. For complete balancing, force polygon must be closed. So I am closing this side. We know that this closing side must be equal to the unknown. So by measuring this closing side and equating with this, we can find the other unknown. There you are. We have got the magnet of B dash. How can we find the direction of B dash? We can draw a vector parallel to this line in the angular position of planes diagram. This is the direction of B dash. By measurement from angular position of planes, 
we can find direction of b dash so we have obtained four answers magnitude and direction of balancing masses e dash and b dash for tiling wheels let us summarize the results we have obtained so far we have to understand the interpretation of these results we have already taken driving wheels as b and e trailing wheels as b dash and e dash we have considered only four wheels so do not worry about the other pair shown in the diagram this is the right hand side view of driving and trailing wheels visualize from here you will get right hand side view what is the me value 75 kg this is 75 kg what is the theta e value 225 degree measured counter clockwise from x axis so if this is my plus x from here this is 225 degree what about trailing wheels the value is 25.33 kg m e dash what about theta e dash 314.6 degree so that means from plus x axis i can measure this angle this would be equal to 314.6 degree at this angle the balancing mass added is 25.33 kg fantastic now let us interpret the remaining values for the left hand side wheels so when we view from the left hand side view we will get b as my driving wheel b dash as my trailing wheel from here i am taking 225 degree at this location i have to place my balancing mass mb same way from here this is 135.4 degree measure in this angular position the balancing mass to be added is 25.33 kg so in coupled locomotives the balancing masses are distributed with driving and trailing wheels very interesting so we have completed the first subdivision let us go to the second subdivision in the second subdivision we need to find the hammer blow value we know that hammer blow is equal to b omega square b here the notation b denotes balancing mass required for reciprocating masses only so far the values that we have determined takes into account mass of the coupling rod mass of the revolving masses of the cylinders mass of the reciprocating masses of the cylinders whereas to find hammer blow we need to find balancing mass that accounts for reciprocating masses only which we have not determined so far to find b we need not to be considering the coupling rod so neglect coupling rod planes and masses we can take ma mf as zero and also we have to neglect the revolving mass of the two cylinders so we have to understand that we are going to consider only reciprocating mass portions of the cylinders alone so which is nothing but 105 kg so we will not be having six planes ignoring the two planes due to coupling rods 1 and 2 because they do not contribute anything to hammer blow we will be considering only four planes now in step 1 let us draw position of planes so though we have six planes technically i will be having only four masses revolving in different planes we know the angular position diagram to start with we know that cranks of the two cylinders will be perpendicular with each other now let us table the data since i have unknowns at two wheels b and e i can assume any one of these two 
planes as a reference plane but I have chosen plane B as a reference plane. B we have unknown this is what we need to find. By using the known magnitudes of the couple values and known two directions of the two planes, we can very well draw the couple polygon. So using this magnitude and direction of plane B, I can get this vector. Using this magnitude and known direction, I can get this. We know that for complete balancing, couple polygon must be closed so I am closing this this closing side must be equal to 1.2 BE by measuring the closing side and equating to 1.2 BE we got the record answer 31.7 kg this answer is what I need in order to determine the hammer blow now we can find the hammer blow this value just now we found we know the small b value given in the problem linear velocity of the vehicle value is given and the diameter of the wheel is given from that I can find r we know that v is equal to r omega from this formula we can find omega value I know b I know omega, I know small letter b. Substituting all the values, I can obtain the record value of Ammer blow as 13 Claude Newton. We got the Ammer blow. The last subdivision is to determine the maximum variation interactive force. We know the formula. In this formula, we know the value of C. We know the value of reciprocating mass. Here we have to put the actual reciprocating mass per cylinder given in the problem. R is given. Omega we found. We know all the value. By mere substitution, we can find maximum variation in tractive force as plus or minus 24.37 Newton. So we have determined all the required answers. This is the end of the solution. Hope you found this video useful. That's it. Take care. Bye.